If you live somewhere that has real serious winters where you get a good amount of snow, uh, anywhere where you would usually want to use snowshoes, I highly recommend getting and trying out a pair of Siberian Hunter skis. But of course, they don't really sell them in the West, so you're gonna have to make a pair. So I'm making this little video series to introduce you guys to and show you how to make your own pair of skis and I guarantee you if you do it you're gonna love it the first time I rode on Siberian hunter skis in the forest I the whole winter world opened up to me and it's truly a blast to get out on those skis and cover the ground uh, effortlessly as it is and so I recommend you trying to take this project on especially now as we have the qu quarantine from the coronavirus and it's a would be a great activity that you'll reap the benefits from long into the future so see if you can tackle it uh, this is the first in a series of videos I hope you enjoy so the Russians will use uh, any numbers of different types of wood I've seen spruce and aspen uh, Siberian pine uh, willow, any type of wood that you can find that's very straight grained and uh, durable, tough, and preferably somewhat lightweight. Uh, although you can adjust, if it's strong enough, you can adjust the weight, of course, by making it particularly thin. So every type of wood will result in a thinner or thicker ski, depending on how much strength the particular wood has. Traditionally, um, the log, a log would be cut down in the forest, a green log, and split using wedges. Uh, maybe I'll demonstrate that also here, but I found this extremely straight grained piece of cedar wood almost no knots which is exactly what you want fairly knot free and straight grained you can see even on the side you can almost follow an individual grain the whole way down the piece of wood very straight grain so I can probably avoid uh, chopping down a big new tree in order to get my wood. I think this will work. I actually haven't seen skis made out of cedar, but it should be lightweight and what it lacks in strength I can make up in a bit of thickness when I build the skis. So given that I have such a good straight piece of wood, I'm going to cut it on the uh, wood miser to uh, about 20 millimeters, maybe just over, maybe 22 millimeters as uh, my thickness of my baseboards uh, from which I'll make my skis. Two boards cut at uh, about seven eighths of an inch, or about 22 millimeters, something like that. Um, again, it's not it's, traditionally you would split it, but my buddy gave me this log that was so straight grain 
They can't resist using it. And they, they do this. I've seen a lot of people make skis this way too. And I had a pair of skis we cut out of Siberian pine uh, with a chainsaw. Just tried to make as clean of cuts as we could and I wore those. And they served me very well for a whole season. I'm sure they're still in use. So <clears throat> I wouldn't be afraid to use the saw though it isn't the traditional method. I am trying out, this is still the test of uh, cedar wood. Curious how it'll go. It's already pretty light for uh, given the size. These are about, I believe, 175 millimeters in diameter, their width, I would, and 22 in ah, whatever fatness. The words aren't coming out. Anyway, I'll end up cutting them off, probably about at my height. Get rid of this knot up here and and do some planing work let me show you what we have here we got this it's 22 millimeters thick this board uh, let me show you what I've marked on here uh, the center is 95 centimeters from the end so the uh, 190, 190 centimeters is the total length of my board. Uh, from the center, I've measured 15 centimeters to this point right here. And then 5 centimeters back on each side. That gives me the toe. That'll be where my toe goes of the oh. foot. And then from Mama, here, <laughs> from here back to here, to the camera yeah. it's going to be 45 centimeters so your total foot area will be 45 centimeters uh, here we have 35 centimeters from the toe to and this is the area that's going to be bent up so this is the part we're going to take the most off of we're going to probably narrow this down to around 10 centimeters yep. yeah and then that'll be the front end we'll also hear this between the front toe and the narrow point here where it bends we'll have a slope it'll slowly slope from the full width here down to the narrower point on the back side so from here about 30 millimeter, uh, centimeters back to this point and then from the end I did 20 centimeters and this is what will get our bend in the back of the ski that will allow us to go downhill if we need to by flipping the skis around or back up easily without sticking our getting dug into the snow so this is our basic start here you go. Now I've chosen to plane off this side because I had this big dent here, so it'll plane right out. Oh yeah, feeling good. Then down here at the toe, we're gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna start doing about 12 millimeters thick, and I'll. Uh, probably go down between 8 and 10 millimeters of course that's going to vary based on your type of wood your width of your ski um, and I haven't used cedar before so this is kind of in that, in that way I'm experimenting but that's why I'll start a little bit thick <clears throat> Okay, pretty good angle down. We just got a little bit of a hump right here. You want to feel it. Make sure you don't have any bumps that are, you want it to be a fairly even angle from your foot down to the toe with your little strengthening rib right here. 
And right around here is where I feel my bump. Alright, so we got one ski ready here. Uh, I'm using already cured dry wood, so I don't have to do anything. My next step will be to bend it. If you're using wet wood, you could uh, let it dry for a couple weeks now. Or there's actually a, using, you know, like a torch of some sort and a form, which I could put a picture up of you can uh, bend these and then leave them in the form and let them dry and that will also help you keep that ski, that ski form. Anyway, happy with that. Here's a start. Alright, so starting ski number two here, I'll show you how I do it from start to end. Uh, I'm making them 190 centimeters long. First what I'll do is I'll cut the edge off that has any blemishes. So, see I got this knot right here. I'm going to just cut that off. I'm sure I'll still have enough. Yep. So, cut that blemish off. Got my little buck saw here. Agawa Canyon Boreal 21. Good little saw. So, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So cut that end off, flip it around, and I'm gonna cut this end off. That way, see if you got any cracks, see this little crack uh, that developed on the end while the board was drying, we'll get rid of it. Okay, so let me show you how I figure out where to put the foot and all that of this ski. Uh, first we're going to mark the center point, which is 95 centimeters. Make sure I cut that right. Oh, you know what? 95 and a half. Hold on. I guess I made it. Alright. Let me make it 95 and a half. Think. Right? Alright. So. There's 17 and a half centimeters wide which would mean the middle is right there all right so that's my center point now from there I'm gonna go 15 centimeters forward 15 centimeters forward. And from that forward point, I'll go 45 centimeters back. Boom. And I'm going to mark at 40 and at 5 right here. You'll see why. I'll mark this 
there, in there, in this, there, in there. Okay, and uh, we'll draw a straight line. Oh, I don't know if I got this in the center, do that. There we have where our foot will be placed. So, this being the back, we're going to come 20 centimeters forward. Make a mark. And from the front, we're going to come 35 and make a mark. Okay. Get the center. Boom, that's our center point. Center, boom, center point. Center point. Okay. This just so happens to be perfect for this. So I'll make my ridge line. Alright, and there we have our layout for our ski. I chose this as the top because when I was sawn, it chipped off here. And that'll be fine because that'll sand away anyway. Alright. So, let's mark 10 centimeters. I mean, 10 millimeters, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, right over here. Here, 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 We're going to plane it too.
All right. And basically this is going to be gradual from here down to here. Connect those two lines. And this is our mark. So I'm going to start by making my angle from here. When planing the spine, just be careful to keep the center of the spine in the middle of the ski and it should gradually decrease from the end of your toe as it moves forward towards the front of the ski, ultimately to level out at the 35 millimeter or centimeter mark that you made from the front of the ski. Then just as you plain rub with your hand, I'll make sure it's smooth and that there's no bumps along the entirety of the reinforcing spine. So, you can see So, back at it. Now, uh, here, you know, we're right along the line but of course, if you flip it and look at it this way, we got a lot of flattening to do across there. So. Pretty good, a little flex in the nose. Close to flat. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Bring it back a little bit. Start of two skis. That's the hardest part is get them all, getting them all plain. And I think they're pretty good. They're light. And the nice thing about the cedar. Alright, step one.